Hello and welcome to all of you, you're watching Tech24. Did you know that 2019 is the international year of the periodic table of the chemical elements? 150 years after it was created by Russian scientist Dmitry Mendeleev, we ask why was it such a breakthrough and why is it still relevant today? Our in-house expert Dan and Jay Cattlecar will refresh your high school chemistry memories with a very instructive session. And in Test 24, we take a look at two long-range surveying drones. With their aerial maps, the Delaire and Aerial Mapper are providing enterprises with greater business insights. But first, blockchain is a transparent and secure information storage and distribution technology. It became known about a decade ago with the rise of cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. Today, it's attracting more and more interest in the business world because of the foolproof security it can provide. In this report, we take a look at two companies in Switzerland and France that are working on the development and commercialization of blockchain. The WiseKey data center is ultra secure compared to three others across the Swiss mountains. They are connected by blockchain technology. Part of its strength is there is no single point of failure, making the network nearly impossible to hack. If there's an attack, our other servers take over, which means that you can never be stopped or briefly taken down. The other bunkers can always step in. Carlos Moreira founded the Swiss cybersecurity company in 1999. It has worked ever since on ensuring the identification and authentication of people and objects online. Since 2008, the work has focused on blockchain, the technology that allows for decentralized information storage and distribution through encryption. The trust in the digital world is undermined by the GAFA. Our vision is for each person or product to have their own personal identification and rather than store them in large databases as done by GAFA, we took the step of decentralizing this data through blockchains. Though blockchain was originally devised for the digital currency Bitcoin, WiseKey is now using this technology in different ways to develop its own products, like the WiseFone. It is the first secure blockchain phone, revealed here for the first time in Geneva. Here you have an example of authentication with a private key to access an application. For the moment, this is the business version, so we can assemble the identities of the business who will then be able to securely communicate with each other. Stratum is a Paris-based startup, providing a secure communication service between different businesses via blockchain technology. We offer a product called Trace, which allows and enables the, the average normal business user to create a workflow and invite all of their partners so that they can share the same workflow securely and peer-to-peer, -peer, which means that all of the data, all of the steps, um, all of the attestations um, are secured by the blockchain underneath, but with a very friendly and easy-to-use interface on top. Many of the clients belong to France's 40 largest listed companies, working especially in the insurance and finance industry. Here we have different partners working together, and each one has uh, the ability to choose which steps they want to share with okay. the partners. To simplify, accelerate, and secure online exchanges, blockchain technology is revolutionizing the world of data storage and cybersecurity. And it's time to welcome our in-house expert, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Hello and welcome, Dan. We talk about it here on Tech24 a lot. Blockchain is pretty much disrupting every sector, but it's, now it's being used in Africa and also in California to try uh, to tackle droughts. That's right, Julia. In fact, IBM and SweetSense, they are using blockchain and IoT sensors to accurately measure groundwater usage, and that too in real time. So what happens is that sensors connected to the pumps they send information to orbiting satellites, which are uh, further linked to the IBM's cloud-based blockchain platform. And the blockchain, then it starts recording all these data exchanges, all the transactions in a very secure ledger. Uh, using smart contracts, they are able to execute these transactions once the conditions are matched. And furthermore, they are also working on something called water credit, 
in which uh, farmers will be able to trade water sources amongst each other. The applications seem endless. Thank you so much for that, Dan. 2019 marks the 150th year of the publication of the Periodic Table of Elements. Considered to be one of the most significant breakthroughs in science, it helped us make sense of the matter around us. The year-long celebration of the anniversary were kicked off at the UNESCO headquarters here in Paris. Well, let's dig a little bit deeper into the significance of the periodic table with you, Dan and Jay. Why was it such a breakthrough at the time? Well, the universal appeal of Mendeleev's periodic table stems from the fact that it is very easy to comprehend. Now, what essentially Mendeleev did in 1869 was that he arranged all the elements in an ascending order of their atomic weights. He realized that certain types of elements with certain chemical properties appear at regular intervals. So if you see here, there are rows and there are columns. Rows are called periods, columns are called groups. Now, elements with similar chemical properties are in a single group. Just to, so to give you an example, uh, from group six, we have carbon, silicon, and germanium. Now, silicon and germanium, you know, they have played a stellar role in uh, our electronics industries. Uh, the reason why they have done so is because of the nature of the distribution of electrons. So in both silicon and germanium, there are four electrons in the outermost orbit, which makes them ideal for semiconductors. So they are neither conductors nor insulators. Uh, pure silicon or pure germanium are insulators, but by a, a process called doping, in which uh, an element with three electrons in the outermost orbit, like boron, and an element with five electrons in the outermost orbit, like phosphorus, they are mixed with uh, silicon and germanium to create or to give them conducting abilities. Now, what's fascinating about this is that Mendeleev was able to predict elements that didn't exist at the time, and there were gaps in the table. Well, just a brief history. Before Mendeleev, it was, in fact, Antoine Lavoisier, the French chemist, who uh, first classified the elements according to their physical properties. Later, Mendeleev, in 1869, he uh, came to the conclusion that it made sense to put them in an ascending order of atomic, atomic weights. Now, while doing so, he realized that he there were some elements whose atomic, I mean, they were not discovered at that time, but he could uh, work out their atomic weights, he could work out their chemical properties, and that's why he put those gaps in his original periodic table. There were 63 elements at the time, now we know there are 92 naturally occurring elements. So just to give you an example, there were three gaps. You can see in the dark, on the left, there's the scandium, which was uh, discovered in 1875, there's gallium, which was discovered in 1879, and germanium, germanium in 1887. So Mendeleev himself saw all these elements getting discovered. Now, the periodic table hasn't remained static since then. It's, it's moved. So how and why are scientists trying to create new elements? Well, let's deal with the how first. Uh, scientists are creating the synthetic elements by bombarding heavy nuclei with a fast-moving lighter nuclei. So just to give you an example, here is how the element 116, or livermorium, was created. Uh, the target is a curium nucleus, which itself is a synthetic element. So there are many curium nuclei and a fast charging calcium ions. They are bombarding on this curium nuclei with the hope that uh, they will fuse together and you will have this giant nucleus of livermorium with 116 protons. But of course, the probability of such a success is uh, very low. In fact, it's, uh, it says that it's, it's so low that it takes, it takes three months for uh, I think it's 10 raised to 18 calcium ions to be bombarded on curium, uh, curium nuclei for it to be successful. You'll get between 0 to 3. So that's the rate of success. And there are four institutes that are at the forefront of uh, doing, the res doing the research. One is from Germany, one is from the US, that is the Lawrence Livermore National Lab, there's one is from Joint Institute of Nuclear Research in Russia, and there's the uh, Rican Institute from Japan. Well, thank you so much, Dan and Jay, for that chemistry course. We're going to move on now to Test 24. You might have noticed it by now, but the set of Test 24 has been transformed into a landing pad for drones. We're going to start with the Aereo Mapper, this beautiful red uh, plane. Well, as you can see, it's quite a big drone, but surprisingly, it's very light. It weighs only two kilograms with the sensor that is a camera. Uh, it's made by the French startup Aeromapper, which is based in Paris. And the model of this, uh, or this particular model is called AVEM. Um, this is essentially a surveying and mapping drone. It has multiple applications. It can be used to survey a pipeline network. It can be used to map cities. It can also have uh, specific agricultural applications. 
And uh, the good part about this drone is that uh, the sensors themselves are interchangeable. So for example, here I have one example of a sensor. It's a 24 megapixel camera, uh, but you can change it. You can increase the megapixels to up to 42 megapixels. You can also have thermal sensors. You can also have infrared sensors. And other, the other impressive aspect about this drone it has is that it has uh, a very long range. So for example, in one hour, it can cover uh, 400 hectares, uh, hectares of area, which is almost 550 football fields. So it's very cost effective. Very cost effective. It's very efficient. And right now in France, there's a limit to the altitude at which, uh, which drones can be flown. So for example, this drone flies at 150 meters, but can go much higher. The only drawback for now is that uh, it doesn't have uh, 4G capabilities, so that restricts its range, so it's up to 20 kilometers, but in the future, the company is going to develop this capability, so that will extend the range tremendously. And now what about the Dell Air behind you? Well, the Dell, this is the UX11 uh, drone by, again, it's a French startup, Dell Air, which is also based in Paris, and this also has similar functionalities to the AVEM. So it's also used for surveying, it's also used for mapping. Uh, the difference is that there's a fixed camera in Dell Air, which is a 21 megapixel camera. But the good part is that unlike this drone, you can have real time uh, photographs, uh, you can uh, access them, you can analyze them, uh, you can also determine or you can uh, change the, the properties of or the nature, the kind of photographs you want to, you want to take, take in real time. Uh, it's very light, it weighs under two kilos, it's around 1.4 kilograms, and it's very easy to operate. the design is very nice. Yeah, it? and because it has 3G and 4G capabilities, its range is uh, larger, it's more than uh, this particular drone. Thank you, Dan. That brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24B. You can watch it again on our website, france24.com. See you next time. You.